Yes, Jim Acosta. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I wonder if you could comment on uh, this disconnect that we seem to have in this country where you are presenting information about what's happening at the border, calling it an invasion, talking about women with duct tape over their mouths and so on, and yet there's a lot of reporting out there, there's a lot of crime data out there, there's a lot of uh, Department of Homeland Security data out there that shows border crossings at a near record low. Uh, that shows of us, but un still, undocumented immigrants me, committing crime at lower levels. Uh, that shows undocumented criminals or undocumented immigrants committing crime at lower levels than native-born Americans. Um, what, what do you I, say I, to you? Your, don't, you don't really believe that. Said. What, what, do you really believe what, that? What do you said? Well, Take let me a ask look you at this. our federal. Prisons. I believe I believe in facts and statistics. Okay, and data, more quick. Let's go. Let me just ask you this: What do you say to your critics who say that you are creating a national emergency? that you're concocting a national emergency here in order to get your wall because I, I you couldn't get it through other ways. Moms, what do you think? Do you think I'm creating something? Ask these incredible women who lost their daughters and their sons, okay? Because your question is a very political question because you have an agenda. You're CNN. You're fake news. You have an agenda. Uh, the numbers that you gave are wrong. Take a look at our federal prison population. See how many of them percentage-wise, are illegal aliens. Just see. Go ahead and see. It's a fake question. Yes, go ahead. Can I ask yeah. a follow-up? Moments ago, the president sounding off on Twitter as Mr. McCabe revealing new details about the investigation in the early uh, stages into President Trump, telling 60 Minutes that he opened the probe, and he also says the Justice Department held discussions about removing the president from office under the 25th Amendment. The president tweeting, quote, disgraced FBI acting director Andrew McCabe pretends to be a, quote, poor little angel, when in fact he was a big part of the crooked Hillary scandal and the Russia hoax. A puppet for Leak and James Comey, IG report on McCabe was devastating. Part of insurance policy in case I won. So he continued, many of the top FBI brass were fired, forced to leave or left. McCabe's wife received big dollars from Clinton people for her campaign. He gave Hillary a pass. McCabe is a disgrace to the FBI and a disgrace to our country. Make America great again. End of a long tweet. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge live in Washington. And that's the latest from the president this morning. What's the latest there? Catherine, good morning. Well, thanks, Sandra. Good morning. Fox News first reported in October that FBI General Counsel James Baker told House investigators that McCabe said Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein was serious about recording the president and invoking the 25th Amendment, promoting his new book, McCabe Confirms Those May 2017 Discussions, and more to CBS News. Until now, Rosenstein and those close to the Deputy Attorney General have said his comments were sarcastic, but this has been at odds with testimony from Baker under oath, and even more so now with McCabe's 60 Minutes interview. Rosenstein has resisted calls to come to Capitol Hill to clear up the conflict. McCabe also confirms what has been widely reported, that after FBI Director James Comey was fired by the President in May 2017, there were two investigations, one into obstruction of justice for the firing, and the other a counterintelligence case into alleged coordination between the Trump campaign and Moscow. I was very concerned that I was able to put the Russia case on absolutely solid ground in an indelible fashion that were I removed quickly or reassigned or fired, that the case could not be closed or uh, vanish in the night without a trace. I wanted to make sure that our case was on solid ground. An investigative source told Fox News McCabe was fired last March for committing three violations of the FBI's ethics code. They included lack of candor under oath, lack of candor not under oath, and the improper disclosure of non-public information to the media about the FBI's investigation into the Clinton Foundation. McCabe's case is now with the U.S. Attorney here in Washington, D.C. Catherine, what's the DOJ's response? Mm -hmm. Well, in the last few minutes, this statement was issued by the Justice Department, and it says Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein never authorized a recording or invoking of the 25th Amendment. But on its face, that does stop short of denying that these issues were ever discussed. In recent part, the Deputy Attorney General never authorized any recording that Mr. McCabe references, as the Deputy Attorney General previously has stated, based on his personal dealings with the President, 
There is no basis to invoke the 25th Amendment, nor was the Deputy Attorney General or DAG in a position to consider invoking the 25th Amendment. And that will certainly not be the last we hear of this story today, Sandra. Fox News alert. The Senate voting to advance William Barr's nomination to be the next U.S. Attorney General. Just three Democrats voted with Republicans. They have raised concerns about William Barr's oversight of the Mueller investigation and whether he will release the report to the public. A final vote on Barr's nomination is expected to come later this week. Let's get back to Fox Top Story now. The president saying moments ago he will look for quote-unquote landmines and a government funding bill. Although he also said he does not want to close the government for the second time this winter. The president telling reporters before a meeting with Colombia's president that he would decide whether to sign the government funding legislation when he sees it. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy joins me now, and that is my number one question. It's being written. Uh, do we know when it will be ready, when, when it's it done? Should be, it, it should be uh, ready a little later today. Now, we're not in the majority anymore. Uh, appropriations that have uh, worked this negotiation, that's what I'm in the same position as the president. I am waiting to see what the language says. But the structure itself, Harris, you've got to think about this. Just a few weeks ago, Nancy Pelosi said not w only one dollar for the wall. The president is getting 55 new miles of wall and barrier inside this bill. They tried to lower the number of beds. And what that really means to your viewers is what they were trying to do is get us to release into society the criminals that were catching that coming across illegal across the border. And then they were trying to eliminate ICE. ICE actually has more money in this. So I view this as a down payment. But the president still has more tools in his toolbox. He can go and grab more money, finish the wall. But the most important thing here is the wall is being built. And the president has said in the Oval Office in the last day or so that this moves him in the right direction, even though he really doesn't like this deal very much. Talk to me now about the process of getting the money to build even more wall. Senator Chuck Schumer says, yeah, the president's really limited in his ability to do this. What do you say? He's not. The pre everybody knows the president has the legal authority to declare an emergency of what's happening along the border. He can grab other money that's out there and use that to build the wall to finish off from the $1.4 billion that's inside this bill. And so we have 55 miles. The president wanted to go a full 200. That's where I was wanting to get more than $5 billion for the barrier. But he could grab other entities that have money and finish that as we go. And what we've really been doing is listening to the experts. And that's why mm -hmm. I want to re read the bill, because we want to make sure we're building in the top three places that the experts say you need these barriers to be in. Uh, what does everybody get? Because isn't that the whole point of a, a deal that actually works, is that people have skin in the game and Democrats get something, GOP gets something? Well, the Democrats don't want to give the president a victory. Uh, I, from Nancy Pelosi's view, I mean, she said walls are immoral, but the president is getting a victory there. They tried to eliminate the beds. Uh, we have the same cap that we had before, so maybe they can't, can't expand too far, but we have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think what it really is is not providing the five billion, uh, just one-tenth of one percent of the whole budget. Uh, I think that's the only thing that they think they're trying to hold the president back. But what's unique in this situation, this bill is a down payment. The president still has other avenues that he can use to get the rest of the money and finish it. Because this president will not give up. We'll make sure this border is secure. All right. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence is going after Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar after her recent tweets about Israel that mainly condemned as being anti-Semitic. Among them, tweets implying that pro-Israel lobby is buying off lawmakers. Here's the vice president earlier today. Representative Omar's uh, tweets were a disgrace. Uh, anti-Semitism has no place in the United States Congress uh, or anywhere uh, in our country or the free world. Unless Representative Omar resigns from Congress, at minimum, Democrat leaders should remove her from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Should they remove her from that committee? I believe so. And remember this, Harris. Uh, what Congresswoman Omar was doing was referring to an article about what I was in a reporter was saying when I had a press conference saying that the Democratic leadership has stayed silent on what these anti-Semitic comments that were being made. And if they stay silent, that means they agree with them. And she did another, another tweet uh, over the weekend. And I think that was a, a place too far for even the Democrats. So they said she had to apologize. But Harris, remember this. 
when I had a member of our conference say something that was, to me, abhorrent. Representative that it goes Steve King. That is, that is not what the belief of the party of Lincoln believes in. We got together, not with the Democrats, but with our own, in our own steering committee, and removed him from any committee at all. Now, the Democrats are not doing that. They're allowing this to continue, saying a simple apology is Why do enough? you think that is? I'm sure you're talking with your Democratic uh, colleagues across the political aisle. What are they telling you? Well, a number of Democrats across the aisle wish that Speaker Pelosi would take the same action that I took against Congressman King, that that would really put an end to this uh, anti-Semitic uh, statements that she is making. This isn't the first time. You look what she's been doing earlier in Congress as well. You look what uh, she's going on. Uh, hopefully she's canceling the dinner, but she's going to have a dinner here in the next month where an individual that's also going to be speaking at that dinner talks about the joy of 20 Jews being killed. Um, this is not the place we want to associate ourselves with, and it shouldn't be a partisan issue. This should be really, when you know the history of this world, we should stand up anywhere that we see this taking place, anywhere in the world. You know, we had on Representative Lee Zeldin of New York yesterday yeah. saying as much, and, and Democrats, as you said, House leadership, Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, uh, forcing that apology uh, from Representative Omar. I want to ask you specifically, since we're talking a lot about Twitter, uh, you put out a tweet about three billionaires trying to buy the midterms. What did you mean by that? Well, that had nothing to do about faith. That was about Republicans versus Democrats. Uh, Michael Bloomberg put in $54 million into the uh, campaign just in the last couple weeks in 24 districts. All I was pointing out was um, money that Republicans and Democrats were spending to defeat one another. You know, one of the greatest joys I have in this job, every single new term, I lead a trip of all the Republican freshmen to Israel. And when I became majority leader and started to do this, I actually changed the course. I sat down with Steny Hoyer and said, let's make it bipartisan. Let's overlap for a couple days. This had nothing to do about faith. This had to do about party and a campaign. Yeah. Real quickly before I let you go, we, we seem to be in a time where people are going to do a lot of this in the public sphere of social media. Does that concern you? It does, um, in, in a lot of manner, because people will hide behind the social media that they will say things they would never say to your face. And th remember this, social media does a lot of great things, but mm -hmm. ISIS could not recruit if they didn't have social media. Um, there's a lot of negative things that can be used by it if, you, if it's used wrong. And the idea that someone would continue to use some type of hate and other people to see that and other people gain together. I think that is a wrong use of social media and that's why people have to stand up in every place and in every faith whenever they see it. And face to face as often as possible eye contact. Yes. Thank you. Good to see you House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy on the program today. Thank you Harris.